I'm so excited about. And uh, it's called, yes, I'll do that. The Lord said, recognize your wife. Recognize Miss Sheila right here, the lino. Amen. Um, we start this morning on a brand new series called The Heart of the Matter. The Heart of the Matter. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bible or scroll on your electronic device to the book of Proverbs. In the Old Testament, that is just before the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs. It'll come up on your screen, but we can't forget how to turn in our Bible. Say amen to that. Amen. Can't forget how to scroll on our devices and find it for ourselves in case one of us are not there to help you get there, right? Oh, don't forget how to get in the Word. We got to get in the Word, man. Hallelujah. It is the heart of the matter. Proverbs chapter 4. And verse 23, I'm going to take my time this morning and establish this message because we're going to talk about it all of October because when it comes down to it, it is the heart that is the matter, the heart of the matter. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of of life. One more time, I'd like to read that. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, out of what the heart, spring the issues of life. Bow your head, please. Father, I do pray over this message. I ask, oh God, that you would take it, mold it, make it into what the people would hear. And I ask, oh God, that there'd be people here, their spirit calling on utterance. Come on, church. Calling on utterance to come from heaven, from the spirit of the living God into their spirit that we might all leave this place with a greater insight into who, how much you love us because there's never been a love like you. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. I want to show you what it says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, in the Passion Translation, TPT, the Passion Translation, which is a powerful translation. It says like this. It says, so above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of, of your innermost being for from there flows the wellspring of life. Isn't that powerful? The passion translation just breaks it down and gives it more strength, more passion. And that's what we want, right? More passion. Now church, when the Bible talks about the heart, when the Bible talks about the heart, almost all, all of the time, it is not, unless the Bible specifically calls about the flesh blood pump, the heart has nothing to do when scripture talks about the heart, has nothing or very, very seldom is the Bible talking about the heart that beats our, uh, that pumps our blood. Amen. Amen. Very, very seldom. Now, you say, well, why do you say that? We're not in elementary school. You would be surprised how many people think that the heart is the blood pump and we got to get Jesus in our blood pump. Now, I want him in my blood pump. <laughs> Amen. Come on. I want him to help my blood pump. How about you? I said, how about you? But that's not where we believe God. Our blood pump can't believe God no more than this, plat this podium can believe God, right? The heart is the uh, first part of the three parts that we're made up of. The heart is, the, we're made up of spirit, soul, and body. We'll say it like this. Can you, are you teachable this morning? I said, are you teachable this morning? The heart, the spirit, watch this, is who we really are. We are a spirit. You say, ooh, that sounds spooky. No, it's not. It's who we really are. It's, you know, who, you know what our spirit is? 
Our spirit, the real us, is who we are when all the lights go out. Our character from our heart, our spirit, is who we really are. And if, and it's, if you don't think me or, or, or somebody is behind you and that little lady sat through the third red traffic light, then the heart shows up. Am I all right this morning? Listen, we, we, the, the, the heart is the spirit. It is sometimes called the core and often it's called the innermost being. And like I said just a moment ago, it's the real you and me. It's, it's who we really are. We are a spirit. We have a soul and all of that lives in a body. Ready? Say it with me. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. See, we are a three part being. We are a three part being. And, and, and what gets born again is our spirit. Our spirit is what will live with God or uh, absent of God for eternity when Jesus comes back or you and I go by way of the grave. Now, I like to break down key words in our scriptures as we build our foundation this morning. The key word this morning I'd like to look at is the very first word in Proverbs 4.23, and it is keep. The word keep means to guard, to guard, or you might say it like this. We guard or we put an armed guard at or we build a fortress around what? Our heart or our spirit. Why? Because we want to limit what gets in our heart. Hello? Say, I'm listening. I guess I, that's what I'm going to get out of this. Now watch this. We must limit what gets in our heart by monitoring very closely what gets in there, right? See, the armed guard of our heart is the word of God. The word of God is the armed defense against anything or that allows anything to come into our heart. However, watch this. We employ the armed guard. The armed guard is not self-sufficient. The armed guard must be activated by a spirit-driven person. Oh, come on, church. The armed guard, which is the word of God, is the standard. The armed guard or the building a fortress around our heart as to arming or guarding what gets in. A lot of people are in a lot of trouble because of what they allow to get in their heart. A lot of people are in a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion, a lot of mess because of what we allow to come into our hearts. Oh, say yes to that. The word of God, Miss Jen, is the measuring stick. Church, something tries to come. You say, you know how we play it off? The enemy has been dealing with mankind for almost 6,000 years. And this is what he gets us to do. He gets us, something tries to come and get inside of us. And what we do is we say, oh, I don't really mean that. Come on. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's, I don't really mean it. I'm, I, I, I just watch it, but it doesn't really affect me. <laughs> yes, it does. We must put an armed guard at our heart. Not everything that wants to get in our heart is a good thing. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all here. I guarantee you. The measuring stick is the word. And the word says what comes in and the word says what goes out. Come on. The word of God. When it comes to us by way of one of the gates, when it tries to get in our eye gate or in our ear gate, come on somebody, when it tries to get in, the word of God is the measuring stick and says, oh no, that's not supposed to be in there. Or yes, welcome, that's part of my life. The word of God measures what's supposed to get inside of us. 
We are Christians, which means Christians. It means we are to be Christ-like. Jesus did not allow everything that came his way to get inside his heart. We must put a guard, an armed guard of the word of God and say, you're getting in or you're not getting in. Hello? It measures the word. See, when the word is strong and we're full of his word, then we know what should come in our heart, our spirit, and what should not. If we don't have a measuring stick, that's why sometimes we're allowing things that bring us down, that give, make us depressed, make us hurt, make us, come on, say things we shouldn't say. It's because we don't have any word in there to measure by what's trying, oh, come on now. What's trying to come in us, we have not measured it against the word word of God and things are getting in there that should not be in there the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord amen that's scripture I don't know where it's found but it's in the Bible you know how we preachers do if we don't know right where it's at we just say it's in the Bible If you would, it's not back there, Haley. I don't know if you can even grab it quickly. But Psalms 19.14. How about you turn there? We're going to go old school right here. But Dustin, it's okay. I take my time and just build on this. I was going to anyway. And so, no, brother. <laughs> Psalms 19. <laughs> Psalms 19. Turn there. I don't have a Bible. <laughs> don't leave without your sword. Might be why a lot of stuff junk is getting in. We got to have our sword handy all the time. Hello. A armed guard, the word of God, at the entrance of our heart, our ears and our eyes. We're going to learn on that in just a minute. Are you in Psalms 19? Look at this. Look at this. I'm talking about she went out and got it. Give her a hand, y'all. Look at there. I'm talking about. Look at this. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What's that saying? Not everything that we put our thought process on is supposed to be in there. We put our thoughts on stuff sometimes. Watch this. If we continue to entertain those thoughts, we may give them the passage to get in there. And what get it gets in there, watch out, because guess what it wants to do? It wants, especially an anointed man or God, it wants to get out. Because when it gets out, then it has creative properties. Am I helping somebody this morning? I'm telling you, I went into this, man, and God began. Y'all not going to want to miss this whole month of October on the heart of the matter. Say it with me. Let the words. Wait, 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 wait. This is a prayer, y'all. Y'all hear this? This is a prayer. King David said, say it with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, be pleasing to you, O oh my Lord, and my strength, and my Redeemer. Now, watch this closely. Look at me, everyone. Eyes, ears, has everything to do with what gets in our heart. Not the blood pump. The blood pump right now, everybody sitting here, is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. But the blood, blood pump is not what we're talking about right here. When we see something with the eye and with the ear, it doesn't get into our blood pump. Y'all understand that, right? The heart of the matter, the heart is our spirit. What goes, the eye is a gate and the ear is a gate. 
and the armed guard stands at attention at the heart at the spirit and what comes in what goes in if it is watch allowed if we tell our armed guard you are you are dismissed we don't need you anymore well i used to think that was wrong but i don't think there's anything wrong with it anymore I used to not look at that, but you know what? <laughs> I'm strong now, and I can just look at stuff. Man, I'm a man. I'm a woman. Oh, I, I used to, I just listen to the beat. I don't hear the words. You an old-timey preacher? No, not really. I think I'm kind of modern, but I know this. Holiness is still supposed to be in the house. Holiness is still supposed to be in the house. What we let in, what we let in, and then we want to sit in the preacher or the minister's conf, uh, counsel or Bible advice and say, why am I going through so much hell on earth? Why am I going? Because you let hell in. You took your armed guard and you fired him. Hello? You tore the fortress down. Am I helping somebody? You, 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 you decided that you're now so spiritually strong, you and I, we can just do anything and say anything and act any way. No, it ought not be so. How can bitter and sweet come out of the same spigot? It's because bitter and sweet got in the spigot. Say amen to that. Now, Tina... As much as eyes, oh, <laughs> I pointed at my ear, y'all. <laughs> I do know that eyes are here. <laughs> All right, Ashley. Uh, extra work for you this week, girl. <laughs> Laughing at your past. No, I'm joking. Just a picking at you, girl. <laughs> as much, y'all, as the eyes and the ears are connected to the spirit, that's not even the most important part. I know we got a guard and what gets in there, but how many know sometimes you fight that good fight? You really did. You have the word as the measuring stick. Something got in there. You didn't even want to allow it to. You know what the key is? It's not the ears and the eye. <laughs> I don't know, ears and the eyes. You don't see with your nose. What's going on with me? Help me, Winch. Help me, Ronald. It's not the eyes and the ears. It is, but you know what's more important? Jesus said it's what comes out of a man. It's the mouth. Oh, Pastor Steve, you're going to talk about the mouth words again? Yes. Why? Because apparently we're not getting it right. Mm, let me go over here. I said apparently we're not getting it right. Apparently things are coming out of our mouths and we wonder why we're living exactly in the middle of what we said last month. Thank you for that one clap. Listen. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, listen, you and I are products of what's coming in. If we build it and build on it and let it fester and it comes out of our mouth, we better hurry up and begin to declare some word and declare a crop failure before the harvest of what we said that was in us. But why not get so full of the word of God with that armed guard that that thing never got in there in the first place? Say amen. Where our mouths are only saying what the word of God says. Come on. I am the healed. I am a child of the most high God. I shall see the salvation of my family. I am a man or woman of God. Huh? Huh? But it's what's in us that wants to come out. It's the mouth. Watch this. Matthew 12, 34. You know where we're going. It says, 
for I got to speed up just a little bit for out of the abundance of the heart, the. Uh uh, y'all not listen, 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 mark this down, mark this down. Out of the abundance of the. Uh uh, uh uh, everybody out of the abundance of the. You know what abundance is? Overflow. So our armed guard got fired. We let a bunch of junk build up in our spirit. Come on, church. In our heart. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't worry about everybody. Look at me. What got built up in our heart. Right. It came out of the mouth in abundance. Stay with me now. Stay with me. This is the most important part. But then watch, it got in there in abundance and it came out the mouth. Well, how important is that? I'm glad you asked. Look at verse 35. 1235. A good man, say a good man. Now, what's, what's look at me. What, what's the best? What's a good man? A good husband. Yeah. What's a good man? Uh, a man that works hard. Yeah. Let's just put it this way. What would make the best man? Someone at somebody's wedding. No, 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 no. Come on. What would make the best a gooder, a gooder man? A good man. Well, it would be a man that's what? Getting God's results. Well, how do we get God's results? By faith. Hello. Look at this. So we could say a faith man. Ah, oh, come on. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to. And the only way and faith works by love. So the only way a man or a woman. Now, this is mankind. This is people. The only way a person is getting any results from what they get in the word is what? By faith. So a faith, good man, out of the good faith treasure of his heart. So what has he done? By faith, he has put a treasure trove, humbly, of good faith words. One of my confessions, somebody might say, well, it's not working too good. (laughs) But one of mine is this. You have filled my mouth, Psalms 103 and 5. You have filled my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. It ain't working. You up there limping. It ain't over yet either. Huh? Come on. Say it with me. Psalms 103 and 5. You filled my mouth with good things now stop in the hebrew language there is no word for things oh jeopardy music (laughs) in the hebrew language there is no word for things you know what the word for things is in the hebrew language word you have filled my mouth with good word So that my youth, come on everybody, get your eagle wings, is renewed. Only me, my God, like the wings of an eagle. You uh, you want to resist aging and forgetfulness and all the things that come with aging? I didn't say it won't come, but we have a right to resist it. How? By the word of God. You know, 70 uh, years was a a rebellious people. Wow. You know that? 70 years, uh, the word says that your your days shall be 70. That was a rebellious people that wouldn't cross over it, that wouldn't listen to God. How many know here the the number of man? The number of men. For your days shall be how many? 120. Now. At 70, if you all busted up, you can look at yourself and say, you know what? That's enough. You say, you mean you can choose when to go and come? Well, I I think so. Why? Moses did it. 
Hello, come on. Uh, Enoch did it. They chose when to go. Oh, I better get back on my subject. I'm hurting somebody. Say this with me. A good man out of the good treasure of his what? Spirit brings forth what? And an evil man, that word right there is wicked, where we get the word wicker. What is a wicker basket? It is twisted. That word evil right there is a twisted mind. What would be a twisted mind? If a good mind is a mind full of, am I helping anyone? If a good mind is a, a, man, a man or woman full of faith, well, what is a twisted, wicked, twisted mind? Come on. It would be someone who's faithless, right? Wouldn't that be about the most evil mind you could think of is one that's twisted and thinks opposite of faith in God, right? Are y'all learning anything? An evil person out of the evil treasure, look, evil, wicked, terrible things have been put in there. Come on. Twisted thinking. Religious minded. Mm. But I say to you, what's Jesus saying? I say to you, every idle word. Y'all want to know what idle means? Every word that does not have an assignment. Or we would put it this way, every unemployed word. Everybody with me? Every word that does not have an assignment on it is a what? It's an idle word. Well, how do words get assignments? By faith. By faith in what? The word of God. That is the guard when we fill it up of what's getting in there in the first place. Are y'all still with me? But for by uh, every idle word, every inoperative, un, uh, undisciplined word, men will speak. They will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be declared righteous. That's what that word means. And by your words, you will be declared condemned. For out of the heart. The abundance, excuse me, of the heart, we speak. It's the heart of the matter, right? Watch this. Proverbs 4.23, watch this part. It'll come up on the screen. For out of it, what? The heart springs the issues of life. One more word today I want to pull out of this scripture for you is the word issues. The word issues means boundaries or borders. Come on now, which means for, watch this, guard our heart, keep our heart with all diligence. Why? For out of the heart are the issues, the boundaries. How many would like to expand their boundaries some in life? Come on. How many would like to limit or advance their boundaries a little bit? Then watch what goes into the heart because what comes into the heart is what expands or decreases our influence. Is this okay for you? A little bit more. Watch this. Proverbs 141.3, set a guard, O Lord, where? Over my, keep watch over the door of my lips. The heart of the matter is we, is we honor God by what comes out of our mouths because it comes from what's in our heart. If you want to change what comes out of your mouth, change what goes into your heart. We bring honor to God when we are very selective with what enters our hearts and with what comes out of our mouths. Empty wagons rattle the loudest. Say amen to that somebody. Empty wagons rattle the loudest have you ever noticed that 
something empty. <laughs> I'm going to just go on and don't look at anyone now. I want you this week to study something, and we're going to stop right here in just a second. Don't close your Bible, though. Mark this. Matthew 15, verses 1 through 20. The Jewish people had come up with a commandment of their own. God did not tell them to do this. When their parents got older, they were supposed to take care of their elderly parents like we are today. Say amen to that. When their parents got older, Memo, I know you're hearing me right there. <laughs> Listen, when their parents got older, they were supposed to take care of them. But the, the, the Jewish uh, leaders came up with a way to get that finance from the people, not God. The Jewish leaders came up with a program and they called it carbon. It meant that you could take that money and say, no, I'm not going to give it to my parents because I'm going to give it to God. It's a gift to God. Jesus said, watch this. You have created that, you created that tradition yourself. That is not from God. Now watch what he says, though. He goes on to say, what goes into a man is not what defiles a man, but what comes out of a man. See, something, listen. Things of the world are going to get in us sometime. It's going to fight and battle. I'm not, uh, we do live in a fallen world. It's going to fight to get in there. It's whether we entertain it and, and, and give it place is whether it has a way to come to fruition. And when we release it from our mouth, then it has power on it. Anybody with me this morning? Watch now, I'm almost done. I'm going to just read a little bit. Look at verse 8, Matthew 15, 8. It's going to come up here. He said, these people draw near to me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their, what? Is far from me. How can that be? How can someone be, their mouth says the right thing, their lips, you remember what my coach told me in football that time when he pulled his fist back? Boy, his fist looked that wide. He called me Delino. He pulled his fist back and he said, oh, if I got to hit you to get it out of you, why? I began to just go through the motion. No longer was there any passion. And he said, Delino, don't give me lip service. Give me your heart. I never was the same. God is saying that to us today. Lip service. Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Clap, 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 clap. But if we were able to stay with all of each other 24-7, what comes out of us is what we've been a, will, willing to entertain all week, then we wonder why sometimes we're in a mess. Anybody with me today? This is what he said. Watch this. He said, your heart is far from me, but those things which proceed, proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed what? Now watch this. He's not talking about these things come out of the mouth. They have gotten into the heart and they're coming out. Why is God saying that's not good? Jesus saying that's not good. Because then is now has the ability to create these things. What? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. Where'd they come from, Dustin? Dustin. If people, we allow those things to get in our heart. I'd never murder anyone, Pastor Steve. No, maybe not with a gun, but maybe with our mouths. I'd never steal from anyone, Pastor Steve. Maybe not, but we steal their peace maybe by not being agents of peace, huh, Deborah? I came by just to say this today. This is what Matthew 15, 1 through 20 summarized says. You've allowed man-made religious traditions to take root in your heart 
which is evident by what comes out of your mouth to the point where now you are polluted both inside and outside. Say amen to that. Why so tough, Pastor Steve? Well, because of this. Watch these points. Number one, make room for Jesus in your heart. Huh? Do we have all kind of stuff cluttered in there? Huh? Is it chaos in there? Or have we made room for the king? Number two, watch this. Fill your heart to overflowing with God's word. Say amen to that. Next is this. Watch this. If you don't have anything good, faith to say, don't say anything at all. I'm trying not to look, you know, look straight. Here's the next one. Let's pursue a teachable and humble heart. When we speak, it displays our inner compass. Huh? When we speak, we don't realize we display our inner compass the way we're headed. Y'all with me? Stand for me. You say, Pastor Steve, well, what's the remedy? What do we need to do? We need to flush our heart out. Don't we, church? We need to flush and fill it up. How do we do that? By a recreated heart. We ask the Lord to renew our heart. Come on. And we, we have a heart, he said, that will be newer than new. Look at this scripture, Psalms 51.10. The king, after he got caught with a, a, a heart full of junk after killing a man and having adultery and getting her pregnant. Watch this. The prophet went to him and said, you're the man. He said in Psalms 51, 10, like a lot of us, like all of us have had to do. Come on, church. Are you with me? Create in me. Orabosa. Create in me. I'm not just getting loud just to get loud. You ought to hear this. Lift your hands and say it with me. Create in me a new heart, a clean heart, a fresh start, oh God. And renew, shout renew, a steadfast. You know what that's good? In the King James, it says a right spirit. How many want that? How many want that all across this auditorium? Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands. Repeat this scripture right here. Romans 10, 8 and 8 through 10. But what does it say? Read with me. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead I shall be saved 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 for with the heart unto and with the mouth come on give the Lord a shout you're saved you're delivered you're set free shout amen somebody